and I didn't meet you, um, Jakub, so I know now who you are, and um, you are going to talk about combined removal of organic micropollutants and ammonium in a column study with reactive barriers simulating MAR. Please. Correct. Hello, everybody. So uh, I will present part of a bigger project called Aquapur, uh, where we aim on uh, testing different barriers uh, to enhance efficiency of MAR systems. In this case, we focus on addition of, of uh, compost in the top of infiltration basins. And we have performed column studies to look deeper into the processes happening in this uh, barrier and to see what happens to uh, ammonium and to several organic micropollutants. So uh, in the bottom, you can see the schematic overview of such a barrier location. And as I mentioned, the contaminants we studied were ammonium and uh, the organic micropollutants. I will use abbreviation OMPs for these. And despite they are micropollutants, so their concentrations in uh, water, surface water and treated wastewater are very low, still, uh, we don't want to have them even at such low concentrations in our groundwater and then drinking water if the groundwater is used for, for this purpose. For example, uh, as it takes place in whole Denmark. So uh, we focused on uh, four uh, different chemicals for different uh, micropollutants. They represent quite diverse uh, structures and quite diverse applications. So we have three uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, painkiller paracetamol, uh, antibiotic sulfamethoxazole, anti-epileptic drug carbamazepine, and a biocide, Deuron. We w decided to use uh, synthetic wastewater in our setup because although our like, parallel system, uh, which is a field site pilot uh, MAR system in Spain, uh, operates with natural wastewater treatment plant effluent. Uh, we decided that we want to have much more controlled system and therefore we didn't want the varying quality which would be a case in a real wastewater regarding both uh, pollutants and nutrients and microorganisms. And also a uh, limited storage of such a medium would be a problem. So we developed uh, synthetic effluent, uh, but there is no consensus in the literature on how this medium should be constructed. So actually, we, on top of uh, searching literature, we also performed quite a few uh, tests, measured uh, uh, nitrogen species and determined micronutrients using ICPMS, and also tested carbon source impact on the performance of uh, smaller columns. And we decided on using a yeast extract mixture and humic acids. So it's a bit similar uh, uh, mixture to what uh, Jörg Dreves showed in the morning. Uh, yeast extract is quite complex, but uh, easily degradable um, carbon source and humic acids are known to be recalcitrant. Ammonium was the only source of uh, nitrogen in our system. And then there was also uh, all the necessary uh, macro and micronutrients. The setup looked like this. So we had uh, one tank with, uh, which was kept at one Celsius degrees to prevent any biodegradation that contained uh, carbon source, nitrogen source, and micropollutants. And then the rest of the synthetic effluent was kept at ambient temperature. These two fractions were uh, mixed at the entrance to the column. The columns were packed with 30 centimeters of the barrier material. And we sampled at the inlet, at the outlet of the column, and also at uh, several side ports at different depths. These side ports were accompanied with uh, oxygen sensors represented by the red dots. And we also had <laughs> possibility to uh, get access to the sediment and take samples for uh, DNA extraction and analysis of uh, microbial communities. 
this is how the setup looked in reality in the lab. So, uh, and you have the, the technical parameters over here. So this is a re representation of a pure sand column, so 100% of pure sand, then 10% composed mixed with sand, and eventually 50% composed mi mixed with the sand. This is how the pure sand and this uh, vegetable r mature compost looked like. And we ended up having 10 different, 10 columns, uh, duplicates for each treatment. So the packing was, as I mentioned, sand, 10% composed, 50% composed, and then some of the treatments repeated. But part of the columns has been inoculated with activated sludge, and some were not. This was to assess inoculation impact on the performance. So the aim of the study was uh, to estimate, to assess uh, what is the effect of having such a reactive barrier in the MARS system. Can it improve the efficiency of the system? And also to see what is the matter, what is the effect of inoculation. First, I will present results of uh, nitrogen species uh, transformations. To start with, uh, I will show uh, oxygen depth profiles uh, we measured oxygen uh, several times, but this is one of the examples uh, towards the end of the, the experiment, but it's quite representative for the whole experiment. So this is depth and this is the concentration of oxygen. You can clearly see that in the first few centimeters of the barrier, oxygen is uh, almost completely depleted. There are only some sand columns which, uh, re re where some uh, oxygen remains. So this means that majority of the barrier will be anaerobic. And this is what happened with uh, ammonium. It was quickly removed uh, in the top uh, layer. And this is actually uh, apparently consuming at least part of the oxygen. And then this, is a, this was a case for all the, all the um, barriers. And then in the bottom, you can see that in case of 50% composed barrier, there is some creation uh, of uh, ammonium, which I'll come back to later. Then this is nitrate, which had uh, increased in concentration and then was removed by the, by the bottom of the column. And then mm, nitrate, which has been created. So it's sort of a mirror image to the ammonium. And then, in case of sand, it remained at the same concentration in the, in the rest of the column or has been reduced, uh, which is correlated to the co compost addition. So there was complete denitrification in case of 50% compost barrier. Now some results of the organic micropollutants. We have applied one microgram per liter in the inflow, so it's quite realistic, environmentally relevant concentration. And so here we have removal here, and then time on the x-axis. So you can see that paracetamol, at, by the end of the experiment, after three, four months, has been completely removed in all cases, in all barriers. But definitely, the maturity was uh, uh, was achieved faster if the columns contained compost and if the columns has been inoculated. You can clearly see that the open symbols which represent the non-inoculated barriers have poorer capacity. So it takes more than two months to uh, reach good removal of paracetamol, which is considered actually to be very easily removable compound. So a take home message for engineers would be if you start a new Mars system, better inoculate uh, the, the, the barrier or the, the top of the, of the system. Sulfamethoxazole showed quite interesting pattern because uh, there was a little bit of removal initially, but then 50% compost barriers has developed very nicely over time. And after approximately two months, they reached up to 80% removal of this compound, or I should say transformation, because it's also possible that it has been just transformed to some metabolite. And eventually, diuron and carbamazepine, they, rep they show very similar pattern with initially very high 
the removal, but eventually this uh, levels down and reaches very low levels, which indicates that they were only transiently sorbed to the barrier material and not really degraded, especially carbamazepine has close to zero removal after all. So interesting thing is that if, we, if, if one should uh, uh, make similar uh, experiment, then it's better to prolong it because if it was only a couple of weeks, the conclusions could be quite wrong. In case of deuron, there is a little bit of removal after all, like up to 30%, and it's uh, beneficial to have compost in this case. Now some depth profiles. So these are the, uh, there will be the results from the side ports. Uh, this, so this is an example from uh, the middle of the experiment, week nine. This time it's depth on this axis and then removal on that axis. So in uh, short words, uh, paracetamol is basically removed in the oxygen conditions in the top few centimeters and then not so much is happening below. And you can clearly see that all the inoculated barriers, sand included, which is just behind the compost lines, has complete removal right away. So for metoxazole, in contrast, shows uh, removal in anaerobic zone. So uh, also a bit perhaps happens in the aerobic, aerobic, but also anaerobic conditions are sufficient to remove sulfamethoxazole to a large extent, at least in case of this 50% composed barrier. And then the two recalcitrant compounds, carbamazepine, you can see nothing really happens, and then the urine is a bit similar to sulfamethoxazole, some removal in the anaerobic zone. And now coming, coming to uh, some DNA analysis, uh, this is fairly fresh data and still uh, going on, the analysis, uh, but we have measured we have analyzed both microbial community structure based on uh, 16S RNA gene sequencing and also abundance of uh, genes which are responsible for nitrogen transformations. This was done with qPCR. So I present only uh, one plot here. So this is an MDS plot combining both uh, sequencing data, these are the blue symbols, and then qPCR, which are the arrows. But let's focus on the symbols first. We, can have, we have very strong effect of the barrier on the microbial community structure. You can see on this, uh, in this direction, there is very clear separation from sand to 10 and 50% composed. These uh, loose, top, uh, loops, loose uh, spots, they actually indicate the top layer, top sand layer on top of each uh, column, so they are a bit special. This is indicating the inoculum uh, so activated sludge sample. And the other factor which determines the community mm, to some extent, a bit lower than, uh, than the barrier type, is time. So you can see the time uh, legend here. So the darkest spots are from the beginning of the experiment and then they drift down uh, over time. And now this is just uh, some help for the nitrogen cycle. So we focused on uh, genes which are responsible for enzymes which, uh, which convert ammonium to nitrite and then, so this is AMOA, we have them here and also here, so it can be harbored either by in archaea or bacteria and then uh, denitrification genes near S and near K and also NRFA which is responsible for conversion of nitrite back to ammonium. So this is uh, the process called uh, dissimilatory nitrite reduction to ammonium. And this potentially could explain the creation of ammonium in the bottom of our 50% compost columns. And indeed, we can see that majority of these uh, arrows indicate correlation with compost, so they are pointing to the left. So they, they were, these genes were more abundant in compost communities, and also they develop over time, most of them, particularly this NRFA, near S and AMOA. So both denitrification and nitrification would increase over time and would also be more uh, pronounced in barriers containing compost. So conclusions. To answer the questions uh, put in the, a in the aim, 
uh, it seems that compost based barriers, active reactive barriers, may sometimes at least uh, improve the efficiency of Mars systems, not always, but it is positive effect on removal of most of the compounds, in this case paracetamol, sulfamethoxazole and uh, diuron, uh, and it also is very good for uh, denitrification. As you remember, the nitrate was completely removed in this case, and then uh, it can cause some ammonium leaching to the aquifers. So basically, based on whether aquifer is oxic or anoxic, you would prefer to have leaching either of ammonium or nitrate. And then inoculation can sometimes matter. There was very little impact of inoculation on the microbial community, but yet we could see that there was sooner uh, better performance of the barriers inoculated when it comes to removal of paracetamol and probably also several other com compounds. And this rhetorical question remains open, I would say. We still have some issue that both some nitrogen species and several antibiotics and other pharmaceuticals can leach to groundwaters. So I think that barrier can improve the efficiency of Mars systems, but we still need better solutions for future. And by this, I would like to indicate our partners from the Aquapur project. Uh, and thank you for your attention. You're also welcome to contact us if you have further questions. Thank you, Jacob, for your clear story. Um, there is uh, time for questions, as long as we wish. But most will go wish to go to the coffee break or the tea break, whatever. Charlie. Now it's good. Now it's working? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, we are, uh, we are indeed uh, doing the similar research uh, with you, so I'm exciting. Uh, I, I want to ask one question, because after the initial absorption of uh, Sarfimacidol, you observed the, afterwards the desorption. Uh, did you observe some other parami uh, parameter ch change that are responsible for this desorption? And another one very small question. Uh, why did you uh, add the, uh, the pollutants with the, uh, with the wastewater separately and not uh, together? So regarding sulfamethoxazole, I don't think it was desorption. I think it was uh, transformation, basically. So I don't think sulfamethoxazole has been sorbed. It's not a generally sorbing compound. And we have mixed uh, the organic micropollutants with all the rest, all the other components with, uh, of uh, synthetic wastewater uh, at the entrance to the columns, if that was the question. Are there some other questions? Yes, here in front. Please wait. Just a correlation to the last question. You, you say you think no absorption, desorption issues, but did you check that? I mean, uh, you say the paracetamol is removed. Is it destroyed or is it absorbed? And uh, did you make some sample of the soil after the end of the experiment and try to get to see if you got still some compound there? It's a very valid question. And actually, we are going to perform uh, an additional sorption test using the same material and mixing it with uh, same compounds at the same conditions and then uh, measure their concentrations afterwards. So in this case, we will be able to distinguish which, which fraction of the removed chemical has been because of sorption on which, kind, which part was, uh, which fraction was uh, because of uh, biotransformation or in general transformation. Yeah, because in this case, if you have a longer experiment, you may saturate the site and then you will have no removal and this goes straight on, could be. This could be, although we think that at this low concentrations, it's not, it shouldn't be the case. But you are right, it is possible. Niels? Thank you, very interesting. Um, you added ammonium as well to the, to, the, to the column, and it seems stoichiometrically these are with oxygen uh, enough to remove all the, all the ammonium. So basically you have an, an anoxic uh, reactor. Um, 
with the degradation of organic matter, as in compost, you can also liberate uh, nitrogen species. Um, have you have you thoughts about that? Whether ammonia yes, actually, I plan to talk about it. Yes. So another option, except of this uh, DNRA process, is that there is some leaching from compost. That's correct. And also regarding the oxygen consumption, it was both transformation of ammonium and also degradation of some organic carbon that we have <coughs> provided in the medium. So yeast extract, basically. OK, I also have a very small question um, about the reactive barrier. Uh, it has advantages, as you demonstrated, but there could also be disadvantages. Can you mention some of them? Well, one that I pointed out was that there is possibility of leaching of uh, ammonium to aquifers. OK, that's one. And uh, it could potentially provide the source of some pathogens. This is also what has yeah. been uh, seen by our partners from Italy, actually. Um, and in a way, it is also not a you know, long-lasting solution. So it could be uh, necessary to replenish such a barrier every few years, perhaps. OK, nice answers. Well, thank you. That makes uh, an end to this session. And I wish to thank all the speakers and the attendance also. <laughs> then there is, after the tea break, there is another session, led by Declan Page and Boris van Breukelen, and it is on Mar Health Aspects, and that is at 1700 hours and 40 minutes. Thank you.